It's been a few months since I posted my last video about a fully AI-generated short film on this channel and so much has happened since then that for every tool that I used back then there is now an even more incredible one. So naturally I'm working on a sequel to that video, but I keep falling into these rabbit holes of tools that I might not use for the next video. They are still incredibly impressive though and that's why I want to show them to you in this shorter format. So today is all about AI rendering and why I think it might be the future for rendering in general. To show you how this technique works, I'm going to re-render my last AI generated short film Cambria the Female Augur in Stable Diffusion and see how it compares. Short recap. For the last short film we tried to have an AI do pretty much every step necessary to create a CG short film. The script was generated by GPT-3, voice acting by Replica Studios, character designs and sets were created in Midjourney and Crayon, and 3D models were generated by PiView HD and depth map generators. Make sure to check out the full video if you haven't seen it yet. However, in the end, I took all these AI generated elements and put them together in Blender and rendered them out traditionally. And it always kind of bothered me that this AI generated short film was not rendered by AI. But during research for my next project, I found a tool that can do just that. So the way this works is very easy. You just need an account at Dream Studio, which is free, but once you start generating too many pictures, you need to pay. And then you just need to download the free add-on for Blender and activate it in your preferences. So I open up this old scene that I never finished as an example. And I, I want to use the AI render to try different styles to kind of see where this image could go. So into the prompt window I just type in whatever I want to see. Bavarian mountaineer looks into the valley illuminated by evening sun romantic painting colorful fog alps. And then we can choose different presets. Wow, sci-fi concept art works well. This is a picture that I could then, I don't know, print out and put next to it and just use as a reference. Sometimes so you, you get so blind when you're looking at one piece of artwork that is your own all the time that doing this refreshes your eyes. But what about video? What about our short film? So I just opened up one of the old scenes from the short film. Mrs. Natush standing in the kitchen preparing something. And you can see the way we generated this, we had this kitchen generated in mid-journey. And then I used the depth map generator to make it at least a little bit 3D so it integrates a little bit better with the 3D models. But you can see this technique really distorts some parts of the image. Before we render out the animation, we need to turn off the random seed so that the noise the AI uses to generate the image stays the same in every picture and we should increase the image similarity a good amount because otherwise the image will flicker like crazy. Okay, actually I'm just trying to render out one of the shots with low image similarity to just see what happens. So yeah, this is what happens. Every single frame is a completely new image, but it's still really interesting to look at. There are some frames in here that look really spooky and, and, and some that look really great. So that's why we have to find that balance between image similarity and prompt strength. And yeah, that, that is pretty much the process that I did for all the shots in the film. I really like how often it unified the shots. I think in the original film you can kind of see that all the objects were generated in different places and then put together in Blender. And also it brings back some detail. For example, when we generated her, she had a head, but the AI that generated the 3D model thought it was hair. And in some scenes with stable diffusion, the head actually comes back. And also here we can see the kitchen has a lot more detail. This is before. It's hard to even identify this as a kitchen, but now with stable diffusion on top of it, I think it looks a lot better actually. Also the background doesn't look as like distorted anymore. The problem is her changing a lot from frame to frame. I thought about one way of fixing it and that could be by using Absinthe, which is a program that lets you stick style frames onto video and it looks more coherent. But now we have weird blending artifacts and we lose a lot of detail and the emotion in the eyes and that's kind of sad. I don't want to lose that. But yeah, the problem is that the AI renderer does not have any temporal cohesion. It doesn't look at the frames that come before and after it. However, I assume that such a tool will be available pretty soon because in theory it already works. Projects like NVIDIA's unsupervised 3D neural rendering of Minecraft worlds 
or Intel's enhancing photorealism enhancement, which takes GTA 5 as an input for its almost photorealistic renders of Los Angeles in the style of a German city, proof that something like this is already possible. But before I get too far off track, let me just show you the final film. May I present Cambria, the female ogre in breathtaking stable diffusion. is going on out there? Cambria, stop at this instant. I said stop. I warn you, Cambria, I'm not afraid to use this. I'm so sorry, child. Nine one one, what's your emergency? I just killed an ogre. I hope you enjoyed this little glimpse into one of the rabbit holes that I regularly fall into while researching for these kinds of videos. Let me know if you enjoyed this video format and what you think about the technology in general. And make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the sequel to Cumbria, the female ogre. See you very soon.